Spielberg, I was, Pat, go ahead. I was kind of wondering, um, you know, how you decide when to be positive after a game versus when, like the other night, or at least at halftime, you were pretty harsh calling them soft. And I'm thinking back to like last year, like the Wake Forest loss was a big one everyone pointed to. You were positive after that one. That was kind of like a turning point. But there are other times when you, you called out, you know, energy, effort, toughness, different things. So I'm kind of deciding how you decide when to be harsh versus positive. Well, first of all, I didn't call them soft at halftime. I said in certain situations they were playing soft. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you were in the locker room. <laughs> well, we, it was a big discussion after the game. I, it sounded like, regardless of the semantics of it, it, the word was used and that was a motivating factor. For well, but it could be referenced in any different way. I mean, sure. it's it's important to not only understand – what has actually been said, but I think it's also important to understand the context in which it was said. That 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 paints the clear picture. Um, what I'm was excited about in regards to our response in the second half, that I felt like our energy and our effort and our our passion on the defensive end got better. Um, which resulted in us getting stops on the defensive end and then allowed us to get to the offensive end and attack the basket through post and penetration and offensive rebounds. And even though we didn't get as many offensive rebounds as, as, as I wanted, I really felt like the way that Caleb and RJ and, and Leakey and all of our wing players attacked the basket in the way that Armando worked so hard and demanded the ball and got the ball where he wanted to. Um, they were fantastic in the second half, and I was very, very proud of them. Armando had mentioned after the game the other night that he personally was not happy with how he was integrating Pete into the offense, and he thought that there were opportunities that he had to get Pete more looks, to get him easier opportunities and things. Is that something that you're seeing as well? And how do you sort of continue working on the process of, of getting Pete to where he needs to be? Well, first of all, we've only – We've only two played games. two games. I mean, he's been here in our program for three, three and a half months. And because of his play and because of his personality, it feels as if he's been here four years. And so, uh, Pete, um, and I've said this, and I've been straightforward and direct before, I, I can't believe he's here. You know, I can't believe he's not in the NBA. You know, where the game is gone in terms of mobile and versatile bigs that can guard one through five, um, can handle the ball, can make plays on the perimeter, shoot threes, finish around the basket, attack the offensive glass. Um, he's somebody that can do that on a consistent basis. And um, um, I'm not worried about, about Pete at all. And um, um, I'm so thankful that he's a part of this team and a part of this program. And he is a huge huge piece for us to be the team that we want to become and i'm glad he's here at carolina hubert along with uh, you know pairing them together in practice and things like that what, what are some of the things you do to try and facilitate because uh, armando I, I, it seems like he's had a different front court partner he has year, every every year. year and so i'm just trying to get at what what helps facilitate them you know getting the continuity together? Well, I think it's a combination of things. You know, I think it's time spent away from the court, getting, having a clear understanding, you know, of just getting to know each other. You know, that's one of the things that why I require the guys to stop by the office at least three times a week and, and we can't talk basketballs because I always tell the guys I can't coach you unless I know you and you can't play for me unless you know me. And so the only way I can get to know you and you can get to know me is we need to spend time together. And, and, and that's the same way for our players. And so I know Armando and Pete spend a lot of time together outside of the court, understanding their tendencies and personalities that, that make it easier to complement each other out there on the floor. And just like last year, you know, with Armando and, and Brady, that chemistry continue to develop throughout the season, and that's what is being done right now, and I expect to continue to improve uh, during this season with Armando and Pete. How have you seen Caleb change since, his, since when he got here as far as how he self-evaluates, how he goes through film and 
that applies critiques to improving his game? He's been great. He's been unbelievable. You know, just uh, his maturity, his growth, um, not just in his game, but just uh, his relationships with teammates, his um, ability to um, just continue to bounce back. I, I just, you know, like I give you an example his defense in the second half was just huge for us uh, against College of Charleston. He had six assists and one turnover. He had six rebounds. You know, two years ago, like I, one of the things that I told Caleb was like he, he was a huge impact in a positive way for us in a number of different ways. It wasn't just scoring. It was distributing. It was defense. It was rebounding. And I have always felt this way. Caleb is a basketball player that can affect the game and help out his team in many different areas on both ends of the floor. And that was on display against College of Charleston. And um, my expectation of him is, is to be able to do that every game this season. Can you give a, an example in his game of, of an intangible area that isn't the stuff that we see on, on the surface that has really gotten a lot better and that is sort of the driving force behind the rest of his game getting better. Um, I, you know, as I said before, one of the things that um, he stops by the office more than three times a week. <laughs> he does, and that's something that shows his maturity and his growth. Um, stops by not just my office, but all the assistant coaches' offices, and and developing that relationship with all of us and spending more time with us. Um, is something that's really important to him. One of the things that, that's, that's very important to Caleb is to be a great teammate, and he is a great teammate. And I'm just really, it's pretty cool to have him here for three years. It's really cool to have a front row seat to be able to see that growth. And I love coaching him, and I love being around him every day. Can you talk about the, the burden of expectations a little bit way on the team after Charleston? Have you seen that relax at all since the last game or any change? Do you still feel like that's kind of there? No, I, I mean, I think, you know, I think it, it's interesting. I was, I was watching the HBO a couple nights ago. It was a, it was a series with, with Bob Costas, and he was interviewing Doc Rivers, who I played with three years with the New York Knicks. And, um, he was interviewing Doc Rivers, and one of the things that, that Doc was talking about is that in order to develop team, it has become more difficult because you have, at times, more people in the locker room than the 18 guys that are currently in the locker room with, with the noise, with the voices, with the opinions from the phone, the family, and the friends. And so every year, I, I think that is always going to be an issue from the standpoint of turning down and turning off that noise from from the phone the family and the friends from the direction of criticism and also from the direction of praise and so i think that's something that that every team is going to have to deal with and manage every year and i feel like um, this group is in perfect position to be able to handle that not only the right way, but a great way this this entire season. I've heard the analogy too, like you climb the mountain, right? The sports all the way to the, to the title game, and you can almost feel like you, you, have to, you start there again at the next season, but you forget you have to start at the bottom. Like, do you kind of believe in that philosophy, and how do you kind of approach it? Well, I, you know, we haven't spent hardly any time thinking or talking uh, about last year. This is this year's team. I think I said it. The last time that we were here, like one of the things that I've learned in my second year is that every year is different. And so this year's team is this year's team. And there's a process for us to become the team that we want to become. It takes time. It takes a lot of preparation and practice to become the best that we can be. And we have full understanding of that. And um, we understand that, that that's where we want to be. We, we want to be playing our best towards the end of the season. To follow that up, Coach, you know, going off of that first time performance against Charleston Southern, <clears throat> is that something you knew you would have to be prepared for, that those type of uh, efforts or lack thereof 
coming into the season because of all the hype coming in or whatever, and just knowing that they might listen too much to the outside noise and, and let it get to them and not bring that full effort for the full 40 minutes. Well, I, you know, I, you know, the the two games UNCW and Charleston have. I'm so thankful for playing those games because both of those teams and programs are are absolutely unbelievable and great. And it's really um, got us to understand the importance of um, doing the little things that allow us and put us in a position to be successful, and that's rebounding. You know, this is the first time since 2014, since we've been out-rebounded by back-to-back non-conference opponents. I think it was uh, Butler and UCLA. And so, um, you know, one of the foundation pieces for Carolina basketball has always been able to rebound the basketball. And I think we were number two in the country in terms of defensive rebounding. And so that's something that um, – has really been brought to our attention and something that that we've talked about that that we continue to address and and something that's going to change. Coach, I wanted to get some clarity on what's going with Pop Johnson. It seems like he's been out for a while. Is there anything you can tell us about yeah. his status? Or- yes, it, it, he um, he practiced um, uh, yesterday. Uh, limited reps today. He's been given full go in terms of being able to practice fully. And my anticipation is for him to practice this entire week and be ready to go when we go out to Portland uh, next week. Okay, thank you. Hugh, where did you come up with this idea, or, or was it a, something that Coach Smith did about the three times a week in the office? That where did you come up with that? I just made that one up. But, you know, like um, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, like you That's know, okay. no, no, no. Like when I was here at Carolina, like we stopped by the office every day. Coach Smith and Coach Guthers never required us to stop by three times a week. So I was in the office every day. I was taking naps, eating lunch, playing video games, talking to the coaches, all of us. That, that's where we hung out. It's different now. And so one of the things that is important is not – I always tell the guys that I, I have got to teach you more than just basketball. And so I tell these guys over and over again, the best way to communicate is face-to-face. It's not through direct messaging or texting or emailing. It is face-to-face conversations. And so, and that's something that I just really enjoy um, in my job. And so I require them to stop by three times a week so that they can get in the habit of understanding the importance and in the enjoyment of being able to speak face-to-face with each other. A couple of the things you mentioned, whether it was, you know, Doc talking about more than 18 people in the room or starting over every year. Is, is is college basketball a little bit more like it was when you were in the like like the pros were when you were playing now than it was when you were playing college basketball? Not at all. Some of that? It hasn't no. changed. No, the pros okay. are the pros. <laughs> I mean, college basketball is, you know, with with the exception of cell phones, uh, you know, you're dealing with kids. You're you're teaching, you're coaching, you're spending time with you're developing relationships with kids and they're really talented they're really gifted they're 610 but they're still 18 19 year old kids and i understand what my job is and my job is to help them and to encourage them and to coach them and to love them and to support them and to give them everything that we can give them here one of the things that i always say is is college is like bowling with bumpers you know just making sure that they don't roll any gutter balls so that when they get out into the real world, they're not only ready to, to survive, they're ready to thrive. And it's a great position to be in, and it's a, it's a position that, is, uh, that we all um, are very humbled and thankful to be in this position. Hubert, uh, going back to rebounding, I mean, are you putting lids on top of the rims now? No, I like when the ball goes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Is it a matter of emphasis through words or is it through drills? Like how, how do you feel like you can go about changing that? Well, you know, it, it is, you know, I, I don't think I can emphasize it anymore. I don't think I could have emphasized it anymore before we played UNCW and also College of Charleston. To me, you know, you can talk about technique. I think, you know, in terms of rebounding, it's 
it's all about a desire, a willingness, a toughness um, to get the ball, whether it's from a defensive standpoint or getting to the offensive glass. To me, one of the things that I think maybe has contributed to it is almost a surprise that teams are going to the offensive glass. A lot of times they don't because they're in fearful, one, because we're such a, a great defensive rebounding team, and two, their fear of us in transition. And the last couple of games, UNCW and College of Charleston have shown us that we have to get back to the basics and fundamentals of boxing out and uh, pursuing the ball and having a, a toughness and a willingness um, to get those 50-50 balls that we talk about should always be North Carolina and be able to change um, the way that we've been rebounding the last couple of games. Time for two more quick ones. Um, despite it being early in the season, we've seen a lot of action from players like Seth Trimble. How is the freshman class adding to the growth this season? And how has that dynamic changed once Jalen Washington is here? Well, I just, I just love them being here, and they've made such an uh, impact on our team in a positive way not only on the court, but in the locker room. Um, you know, you can see, you know, the ability that Seth brings to the table, his athleticism, uh, he, can, he can change a game and be a factor on both ends of the floor. I think he's terrific picking up full court and, and defending the ball handler. And so he's been huge for us and I look for him to get even more minutes. Um, Tyler Nickel, his ability to shoot the basketball be in the right spots, um, make the right plays. Um, as a freshman, I wasn't even ready to be in this position that Seth and 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 Tyler and 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 Will are in. And Will continues to improve. Shaver continues to improve. And I look for him um, um, to have time out there on the floor to help us because I really believe his size and his skill can help us. And Jalen is getting really close. Um, he's been practicing with us. Um, last week was the first time that he can do full court um, activities in practice. And I think right after um, the games in Portland, um, I think it, it could be an opportunity for Jalen to be full go in terms of putting him out there uh, during the game as well. Uh, one last one. I got one. I don't want to waste on this, but UNC football. Uh, Coastal champions. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? If you're a big fan of the football team, uh, uh, I'm a stuff. huge, huge uh, football fan. I love college football. I love UNC football. I love Coach Brown. I'm so proud of him, his staff, his players. I sent him a text this morning and just told him how happy it, um, I was for him, for his staff, and as for his players. One of the things that brings joy to my heart to see kids with a smile on their face. And so after um, they beat an unbelievable Wake Forest team this past weekend, just watching it on TV and just seeing the hugs and the, and, and the happy tears and the excitement um, from all of those kids was just really cool. One of the things that we always talk about um, to the players all the time is a, a great characteristic of anybody is to be able to celebrate the success of others. And so to see um, Coach Brown and UNC football be successful this year uh, puts a smile not only on my face, but everyone else's faces and seeing our um, um, you know, our field hockey team and um, women's soccer team. It's just um, um, I'm really, really proud of Coach Brown and be cheering for him uh, this weekend against Georgia Tech. I imagine your relationship with the May family for multiple reasons. May. Oh my gosh, yeah, and then so to have Bo on the team, and um, you know, anytime we, we schedule practice, I, when do they play at twelve noon? It was a couple weeks ago, so we practiced at ten, so that we can make sure that we were done with practice. So I think it was Virginia. They were playing at, at noon and we had practice at 10 a.m. So to make sure that we were done with practice so that all of us could support um, the Carolina football team when they were playing at Virginia and um, and so that Bo can watch his brother. And um, I did real quickly just want to just to comment on what happened at the University of Virginia. It's um, 
just made me very, very sad. Um, I'm a father of three. My oldest son is in college and I just can't imagine and, and I don't want to imagine as a parent getting that type of phone call. So I just wanted to say I'm very sad for um, the University of Virginia and specifically their football program. And I just wanted to speak on their behalf. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah.